In this video, we're going to fix this two problem. First, we're going to deploy our application with backend so other can call the API and they can get all the NFT which they will create on our platform. Second, we're going to modify our code base. So in this particular playlist, in this particular project, we are using third web as a tool for deploying and developing our contract. But we're going to make it as an independent. We're going to use hard hat for deployment and connecting with the blockchain. So make sure to follow this entire playlist. We got an amazing response in this entire project and a lot of you guys have included this in your own application. So with that said, let me take you to the code base and let's see what are the changes you have to do and how you can deploy that. Here I have opened the project in my code editor and this is what we have coded together in the entire playlist. So this is the final code starter file image and this is the updated code version which we're going to deploy on internet with the backend. So let's start with the folder which we have coded together. So this is the final code in that we have built the backend. This is the component. This is the context. This is the pages. And in that you will notice that we have used third web. So we have used third web for making the connection with the blockchain and deploying our contract. So that information you will find here in the web three folder, you can see we are using third web for deploying our contract. But in the updated code, we're not going to use third web. We're going to use hard hat. So this is the one which we have coded together. Now let's talk about the other code. And this is the starter file which is given to all of you guys. So you guys simply download it and you can start coding along with me. So here you will find all the packages we have here. And close that one. And here we have the image folder and that I have explained that what are the pages, what are the components you and I are going to code together in the playlist. So make sure to follow that playlist that will teach you a lot of things. Now let's talk about the update code. Then I will show you the old code version. So this is the updated one in which we are not using the third web so let me open that one and here you will find that we have a web3 folder but if i open that in that you will find that we are using hard hat we are not using third web so this is the basic configuration we have done for deploying on the local host which i have explained extensively in the playlist so you can follow that this is the simple deploy script which allow us to deploy our contract and here we have the contract which we have written together so it's a pretty huge contract which you're going to code together if you follow the playlist and what I'm doing is I'm simply deploying this contract on my localhost. That's the only thing I'm doing. But you will notice here in the context file, the contract which I have deployed, it's on the Polygon test network. So if you simply take use this particular contract address, you will get a particular NFT which I have already created, which you can able to fetch, fetch that. But I already have explained that how you can deploy to Polygon. So I'm not going to cover that as well. So this is the modification I have done. So simply instead of using third way, we are using hard at and we are using this particular packages. So that's the basic thing you have to do. Not that rocket science. Now the changes you have to do here in the context. So this one is very important. This one is very important because all the changes we're going to do it right up here. If you talk about, let me give this comment and let me open this particular file as well, the context one. And here you will find that here I have this. Okay, not this startup file. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. So let me close this starter file and let's go back to the component the final code and here we have that one so this is the one we have in that what you will notice that here we are using hard at hooks so this is the hard at hooks we have so all of these hooks we are using which allow us to connect with the blockchain and here we are calling special method which hard provides you that how you can pass the address and how you can get the information of it that's all i have explained here and here we are using all of these hooks which allow us to connect and get the contract address and all of that. And this is what we have covered in the playlist. So make sure to follow the playlist then all of this function will make sense to all of you guys. Now let's talk about the update I have done. So in this update, what you will notice that we are not using third wave here at all. We are not using third wave at all. So let me close this particular folder so you guys can see in which folder we are. So here we have that one. So this is the entire packages we are using we are not using third web and here we are importing the address and the abi because so all you have to do is to simply deploy your contract once you deploy it will give you the artifact inside the artifact you will have the abi so this is the like we have covered this thousands time on our channel that how to get the artifact so make sure to drag and drop here here we have the context file in that we are simply calling the abi and we have the address of the contract so this contract is deployed on polygon so i'm providing to polygon but if you're testing locally so you have to provide the locally so this, that's already i have explained multiple time in the project in the playlist so you can follow that 
So that's what I have. That's the changes I have done. And now simply I'm creating this particular function fetch contract. And here we have this particular function called connecting with smart contract. So these are the two function you have to create. This particular function, make sure to pause and take a screenshot or you can simply type it. Or you have this particular function connecting with smart contracts. We are using Web3 provider to connect with the blockchain Ethereum and then we are simply getting the contract. So these are the two functions you have to add. So these are the two functions we have, fetch contract and connecting with smart contract. And here I have the same variable I have taken. I have done a little bit change in the variable type, but it's exactly the same. And here we have added two more function because we have to get the connect with the wallet. So here we have the particular function which allows us to connect with the wallet. So this function will run every time when the user will reload the page. So it will check for the user address, whether he's connected or not. So this is a very simple function. I have already explained multiple times in the NFT marketplace. So you can follow that. Then we have, I am simply calling the function straight away because this function should be called every time whenever the page load. And here I have the another function called connect wallet. Simple, we are getting the address of the user based on the click given. And now comes the most important part that how we can get the contract object. So if you look at in the earlier version, we are using the hook which was given to us with the third web. But here we are using a simple function. So this is the function which we have built on the top, on the top which have the content, the, the contract object. And that's what we are simply calling here. It will give us the contract object. Then we are simply calling the function on the contract. And here we are simply passing all the data with the value. So that's the only thing you have to do. Simply call the function, it will give you the contract object. And now you have to simply pass all the function, all the variable which you have defined inside the contract function. So if you talk about the like update listing price, you have to pass the price. If you talk about donate, you have to pass the ID and the amount. And we have all of that. So we have the update function. So this is the function for update in that you have to pass the creator address, image, title, and that's all and we're simply passing in our contract so that's the simple logic so this is the only update you have to do okay it's pretty simple and this is the exact thing you have to do in all the function all the function i hope you guys have understood again it sounds any complicated make sure to follow the complete playlist in that i have explained detail that how you can do that so now everything looks pretty good to me no issue i have now i'm going to show you how you can deploy that one so this contract is already deployed i'm not going to deploy one more time because i don't have much gas because I have already used a lot. So if I come back here in the package, now you can see here I have this one. So this is my package version and you have to do the modification here in the script file. So if you are testing this contract, this application locally, then you should better use this node module because whenever you save, it will restart your server whenever you will save. But when you are deploying on internet, make sure to convert it to node, which I will do. In a while so this is the change you have to do and here you have to keep it exactly the same no need to do any changes you have make sure to provide your the database url and the password you have to update it and all you have to do is to deploy this particular code this particular code to github so let me do it very quickly i believe that you guys know how to deploy this code to github so let me do that very quickly so finally i deploy my entire code to github and here you can see this is the entire code base i have for the project now let me tell you the changes you have to do so if you look at in our packages and file this is the code i have deployed i have done a couple of modifications so make sure to remove this instead of this node mod you have to say node and here we are using this particular package. So when you push this code to get up, make sure to remove this package because we're not going to use it. And this one is for the development, not for the production. And that's the exact change I have done here. So if I show you the packages and file, here you can see that I have done the changes already. So I have used this node instead of node mod, and I have already removed that node mod package from here. So make sure to do this. This is what exactly you have to do. Make sure to check the server. The server file is already good. Don't need to do any changes. We are mentioning the production. That looks fine. And now come back to the config file. So this is the config file we have. And here we have this database password and database string. So these are the things that are important for all of you guys because this is what we're going to provide in our digital ocean environment variable. And here we have this variable as well. This is also we're going to provide it. So once you're done with that, Okay, I hope you guys have successfully pushed this code to get up. Now let's come back here. So here I have this resource section and here you will find all the tools which I use for my 
clients for my project that's all you will find here so i would recommend you to use digital ocean because that's very easy and very convenient and anybody can utilize it and right now they are giving you 200 dollar free credit so for the next two months you can easily utilize their service for absolutely free so make sure to come here and click on that and it will take you to the digital ocean it will give you the 200 credits which you can use for the next 60 days so make sure to come and create your account and i already have an account so i'm going to simply log in straight away so let me do that very quickly so here i'm back in my digital ocean account and this is my test environment where i test all the application before i push to my clients so here i do all the testing so the, you will have an exact interface but in your case you will have no project and i have a couple of project so the very first thing you have to do is you will get this option called create click on that and here you have a bunch of options which you can pick from so i use mostly all of this this one is very popular for me because I have a lot of API for different things which are running. But in your case, this application, we're going to deploy the back end with the front end as well. So you have to click on this deploy your code. Once you click on that, it will take you here and here you have to provide all of this detail, including the repository. So here you will say that you have to provide the resource means the code base. And here they have a multiple option. So you can select GitLab, GitHub, DigitalOcean, Registrar docker so we're going to use getup so i'll select that one and from here you have to select your repository so make sure you have to connect and create your account with getup or if you haven't created your account with getup there is no problem you can simply connect with getup so make sure to connect i have already connected that's why i can able to see all the repository which i have built here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come back to my repository and i'm going to simply copy the name of my repository simply copy the name and that's all you have to do and simply provide here it will automatically find that repository so this is the one repository which i will use and that's my code base for this project so i will simply select this one and it's going to select the branch don't need to do any changes don't need to do any changes because we have already done in our packages and file now you have to click on this next then you have to wait for a few seconds It's going to create the directory and from here you have to select the package the plan which plan you want to pick so i will go to the edit plan and i'm going to be the basics one and you can simply scroll down instead of going with the basics i'll go with pretty low five and this money is going to be deduct from your basics plan the the 200 kd you will get once you're done with that make sure to click on back and now you have to click on this next we're going to provide the environment variable as well but for the time we click on next and click on next and let's have a look one more time so everything looks pretty fine now you can click on this create resource so this will take few seconds so just wait now what i want you to do is come back here in your code and here we have the dot config file i hope you guys have all the environment variable with all of you guys so we have to provide all of this data so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this database and i'll come back here my code is already deploying so i'll go to this environment variable click on this edit and here i will provide that database so this is the database i have now i'm going to simply take this string so make sure to copy this entire string copy that one and here we have to provide that as a database string simply click here then go back then i have to get the database password and i'm going to simply provide the database password here let's provide the password obviously i'm going to hide this particular information i don't want to share so other can utilize my database then provide this jwpt secrets which we are using for authentication and copy that one as well paste here now we have to provide the expiry in because we are providing 50 days so it's a 50 days then we have the last one is the cookie in and it's for how many days okay the cookie is going to be there for 50 days once you provide all of this detail make sure to provide the exact right detail and click on save once you will save it's going to be set in the environment variable and now we can easily able to check our application so it says that go to building logs click here and here you will find all the logs in the process of getting building so just wait this will take a few minutes sometime it take five minutes ten minutes just wait soon it will deploy and it's going to give you all of these details so i'm going to wait unless the deployment get completed and here the deployment got failed you can see the database was successfully connected but the deployment got failed and i know why it's got failed so first thing we have to do is come back in the setting and here we have to provide the environment 
whether we are in development or production so come back here in the environment click on edit and we can add one more variable so here we have to type this node env in that we have to explain that which environment we are in because if i show you the code base here you can see that we are mentioning this process.env and we are calling it production if it's not production then it will take the dev otherwise it will take the production one and that's the configuration we have do, done in the server file so here we have to call development so come back here type development so this is what you have to type so this is what you have to type development got it then save once you do that now it's going to simply restart your building click on this building now and it's going to do it so just wait it will take few seconds and it will continue your building so so whatever changes you will make in your code in github that's automatically will fetch and it will start building that command so here you can see it's happening so let's click on that so it can refresh and finally it got started once again here the building process now i have to wait for a few minutes again so i'm going to simply pause the recording and i will come back once it's got so we are done with all the setups now you have to come back here in the servers file and here you have to do this last change so like earlier we were going with the port 3000 but now you have to get 8880 this is the port you have to assign now if you come back here our application is successful deploy you can see all the logs and if you come back here you can see all the details about the application and if you click on that you will see that what is the status so our database is successfully connected and now we can simply click and check the runtime log so all the status you will find whatever error it will occur that's all you will find so click on this live app it's going to open the application in your new browser and simply type your metamask password and simply click on unlock and it will select the account connect and here we have connected successfully reload the page and you can see this is the nft we have created in our contract and that's what we have here you can simply copy the url close that one and paste in the new tab and this is the image we have created you can also get this image with the help of the api which we have built i'll show you so let's create an account first so let's type the name dalat hussein let's pick an ml id i'll say the blockchain coder let's give the password password and click on sign up here we have created the account and we are logged into the application now you can simply log out as well so this is the profile you can click and you can able to have the details so that looks pretty good now let's log out from the application to check everything's working fine so finally we are logged out with the application and here we have the profiles which and the images displaying because the authentication we are doing with two step one with the metamask and one with the login credential so make sure to follow the entire playlist i have explained everything in that so this looks pretty fine now let's log in let me reload the page let's click here let's simply provide the email and the password and click on login and here we are back into the application looks pretty fine okay that looks good nice over effect you can click and you can able to have the nft details you can simply copy the url you can copy the url from here you can donate the fund i don't have much fun i can simply download the image so the downloading is completed so this one is also looking good to me you can click and you can download and you can close that one now come back to the api and here you will find all the endpoint we have built in our backend api which you can which user can simply call so if they want to get and create a account they can click on this sign up if they want to log in they can click on this login if they want to upload this is the endpoint they can simply call it in which we are uploading the nft so this is the endpoint they can simply call it so let's copy this one and let's try to get all the nft because if they want to create they can call the same endpoint and if they want to get all the nft they can call the same endpoint so let's replace this particular and provide the api endpoint so i'm going to remove this one slash slash api slash v1 nfts hit enter and will give you all the nft we have created so this is the details we have here you can see that looks pretty fine success right now we have this result and that's all looking absolutely fine now simply come back here and that's wonderful so this nfc looks good now we can come back here and again i would recommend you to come and check this particular course that will teach you every single thing which you have to know to become a blockchain developer we have built this one of the biggest 
NFT marketplace with tons of features. So that is great. And we have successfully deployed, you can see, we have all of this stated. So DigitalOcean is very, very easy and beginner friendly. And it's giving you 200 credits so you can start very easily and test it out for two months without paying any money. And come back to the resource section. Here you will find all the resources which I use. So simply click on this get now and it will take you to the digital ocean. So I believe that you guys have understood how to do that. With that, I'm ending this video and make sure to follow the entire playlist. That will teach you so many things. Okay, just follow the playlist. So have a wonderful day. Bye.